Charlie, you've talked about how shy you were when you were um, in maybe grade school or a teenager. Can you think of any stories that would explain that? Sure. I, uh, I mean, I remember one time when I was in uh, elementary school and I was so scared to talk in class. I had spent all day not talking at all. Um, I had spent all day not talking at all that by the time I got home, my mom asked me how school was and my voice kind of was like cracked and croaked because it was literally the first time that I had opened my mouth that day because I was really shy to talk in school, especially. I would say that school was my, I was my most anxious in general, just being, I think it was just something about being like a young girl and having boobs. <laughs> like I was scared to, scared to show off my body too much. I was scared to draw any attention to myself. I didn't want to be, I was very much like a, a teacher's pet, but I don't know what it was. I just felt like standing out might get me in trouble somehow. So I just really kept to myself. I kept really quiet. I remember the one time I ever got a laugh in class was, and I never talked <laughs> in class. Like I'm not a clown. I'm not a like a class clown. I'm not, I'm always in the front of the class. I'm always like the teacher's pet. I'm always answering questions, but never like shooting. You, you know, I'm, I'm never hanging out with the kids in the back of the classroom talking. Um, this one girl, we were in history class and we were talking about politics and she was, and she was saying, well, if, if this happens and this happens and if that happens and that's going to happen. And I just turned around and I was just like, what are you psychic? And then everybody exploded in laughter in the class. And that was literally the one and only time <laughs> I was like in middle school. That was the one and only time I ever like got a laugh in class or like talked out of turn. That wasn't like a teacher asking a question, but I was just a very quiet, quiet quiet kid. I even have a story of like eating in the bathroom one time. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I was too scared to eat because no one wanted to let me sit with them. Mm -hmm. And I was too scared to eat by myself. So I just went and sat in the bathroom and ate by myself. Uh, it was really, really a dark time. <laughs> it was like, yeah. I was entirely too shy. Yeah. We would go to the VA hospital next, next, uh, it was me and like a couple people that were also the sort of misfits. And then the VA hospital told the school and we couldn't go there anymore. Wow. That's <laughs> really sad. <laughs> How old were you when you became less shy? I think 24. I would say when I was 24, I moved to New York and I had this deep desire to do stand up. And I don't know where it came from. I don't know why, what demon in hell decided to put this as something that I wanted to do. Um, on my heart or in my gut, you know, but it was just something that I wanted to do. I wanted to get up. I wanted to do stand up. I wanted to tell jokes like the girl that never talked, the girl that never um, was a class clown or anything like that, like wanted to go to New York, a city I'd never been to. I grew up very like overprotected Haitian Christian girl um, in on the East Coast. So it just was something that was really outside of anything I'd ever identified with, but yet it was something that I wanted to do. So I kind of had to like, I had to overcome my shyness and do the thing that was on my heart to do, which was to go try stand up. Um, so I would say, and I did that when I was 24. And that was the first time that I had like really <laughs> overcome some, some shyness. So you'd graduated from college I in did. Massachusetts and then you went to New York and, and, how, that first time getting up in front of the crowd, how many people were sitting there? Uh, it was an open mic. I think it was maybe 10 or 15 people, other comics. I'm including the bartender, possibly the host of the show. I think it was like about 15 people in the venue where I got up and did my first jokes. How did it go? Poorly and wonderfully at the same time. <laughs> I, I drank a bit too much. I had like, uh, I had a shot with a beer or something. I was 24 so I could mix alcohols and that was fine and still wake up the next morning and go to work. But that is no longer, but I was 24. I could still do that. I had a shot and a beer cause they had a special at the bar and I was already like, that was enough to get me like sauced <laughs> before I went up and did my show. Um, but 
What happened right before, there was, so I had brought this girl with me uh, who was at my job. So I was working at Columbia University at the time in the, um, in the I was an administrative assistant in the film department actually. And uh, there was a new intern that had started that day and we had just gotten to talking and I told her that I was gonna try stand up for the first time that night. And she insisted on coming, even though I had told no one and I wanted no one to come, <laughs> she insisted on coming. And then she came and she had like very, very short hair. And the comic before me made fun of her hair. He was doing some like crowd work. He made fun of her hair. They get into this huge fight. They get into this screaming match right before I'm supposed to go up. Um, it totally like messes up the vibe of the whole event. And instead of canceling it like the host is like should we cancel it like should we keep going they decide to keep going and they're like all right well i guess we're gonna keep going next comic charla <laughs> so then, like it's just this horrible vibe in the venue and i have to get up and i'm sauced and i'm nervous <laughs> and these this is literally the first time i'm gonna be saying these jokes that i've written ever um and then I got a few laughs maybe, you know, but I think it was like way more important that I went up and did it. And cause that is the barrier, you know, the barrier is getting up and doing it. It's, it's not so much. I hardly remember if anybody laughed or not. I just remember it was just such an awkward night. It was such a memorable night for being so ridiculous for all I wanted to do was just try stand up for the first time. So yeah, I don't remember if anybody laughed, but <laughs> it was both, Wonderful and terrible at the same time. Do you think that doing stand-up made you less shy? Or were there other things that happened? You're out of your home state. You're in New York City of all places. You're riding the subway. I think, yeah, I think the whole thing. I think, yeah, the whole thing made me less shy. The whole experience of moving to New York, of getting up in front of people, of doing something that I thought people might judge me for because it was so not um how people know me people know me to be christian haitian quiet you know church girl kind of you know athlete at school you know it's strong student kind of person i'm in the i'm like the director of like the community services on student council <laughs> like i'm like someone who's clearly gonna on their way to college like i'm just i don't think that i was someone that people saw as a performer you know, or maybe I didn't see myself as a performer, but I think it was so much more than just the performing that made me less shy. It was the not being afraid to live authentically that made me less shy, not being afraid to quit my job that made me unhappy and do something that I thought might make me happy. Whether or not stand up made me happy, it's made me happy, it's made me sad, it's made me all kinds of things all the time. But I genuinely think just living my life and just living my life, the life that I want, not what my mom wants, not what my religion wants when I was religious, <laughs> not what the world might want from me because I'm a black woman or something like that, what people might expect from me or because I'm Haitian, whatever it is, I think what has really made me less shy is really, really doing my best to be myself and being okay with being myself in front of people. Is shyness still an issue for you? Absolutely. Shyness is very much an issue for me, for, for sure. I think it's something that, um, I don't wanna say it's something that I'll never get over. <laughs> I don't think I'll always be shy, but I think that there's just something about me that like finds a lot of comfort in being by myself a lot of comfort in just being in small groups of people, small intimate situations. I don't love big crowds. I don't love being the center of attention all the time, <laughs> you know? So I definitely think that's a part of my personality, but I think it's just taking a new form the more I'm able to be myself. It's, it's, it's more about, um, it's less about being shy and more about knowing that I'm safe to be myself in public. I'm safe to be myself in front of people. And I can still be, like I can be on this show, I can be on Film Courage and I can still be a shy person. And that's that's still who I am. But right now what you're seeing is, is me being 
um, a shy person who's comfortable and feels safe when people see me as who I am. And I don't feel like I have to put on any kind of airs to, to do things that might be scary or might make me nervous or anything like that. What about in a TV writer's room? Do you feel that you have to be more of an extrovert or is that accepted because would you say most writers are hermits? <laughs> I would definitely say that a lot of writers can be introverts for sure. And I definitely think uh, a lot of writers can struggle to speak up in the writer's room because they're shy. I'm one of those people. And I, have a, I just had my friend Lamar Woods on The Working Writer and we talked about his anxiety and his, he, is, he takes medication for anxiety. And um, I myself am someone who's diagnosed with a lot of anxiety and just having to pitch at the level of consistency that you have to pitch at in the writer's room in order to contribute in the way that you really should be contributing as a writer, it can really be daunting sometimes, especially if you're a perfectionist, if you're someone who overthinks, if you're someone who is not confident in their ideas, uh, it really can be challenging and it really forces you to kind of get comfortable with having bad ideas heard out loud <laughs> with, you know, not getting your ideas put into the show with, um, being vocal, even if you think your idea is not that good, you know, it's really about, uh, contributing over everything. Um, that is how you are an effective writer in the writer's room is your, is your voice. It's your contribution. And you, if you're somebody that is shy, you know, what I've tried to do is really look at the anxiety that I've had in the writer's room as an opportunity to get over my shyness, as a way to like get to the heart of what is really going on, which is that, oh, I'm, I'm struggling with perfectionism. Oh, I'm struggling with overthinking. I'm not in the moment. I'm not present because I'm thinking so much about how this pitch will be received that I can't listen so that I can contribute and participate in the way that I need to, to be a good writer for the room. Um, and I think it's also something that just makes you kind of have to like, you have to put yourself aside a little bit because at the end of the day, it is work, it is a job and it's heavy lifting. <laughs> you know, the writer's room is a lot of work. And when we're letting our anxiety and our fear take over, it takes over our ability to do our job. So it's, it's, it's not easy. I've definitely had to struggle with it. I know so many writers that have struggled with it. Really good writers. It doesn't matter. You know, like, it doesn't mean that just because um, I do it a lot that it's not hard. <laughs> so it can be hard, especially if you're shy. Um, but I think it is good for, I think it's good for, for our, um, to build up gumption. <laughs> it's just build up a lot of, like, I have to talk, so I'm gonna have to just be confident <laughs> that whatever I say is good enough, and it's gonna have to be good good enough for me. And that's because my speaking is more important than protecting myself from failure, which is what is really going on underneath. I like that gumption. Do do you do you still do you think when you let's say you go back home to Massachusetts, you've now been in two of the most competitive cities, LA and New York. Most people never leave their home state, th those are two kind of scary cities. Yes. Do you feel differently when you go back there or, yeah. or does it, do you slip into old Charlotte? That's interesting. Cause I do feel differently when I go back there and old Charlotte always felt that she didn't belong in those places anyway. Old Charlotte, when, you know, when we lived in Florida, when we lived in Massachusetts with my family, I never felt like that I felt at home, but I didn't feel that this was the place that I belonged. I didn't feel like I belonged in these places because they were too slow and there's nothing wrong with slow. Slow is amazing. <laughs> at this stage of my life, slow is amazing. But at that stage, I wanted more action. I wanted more challenge. I wanted more adventure. And those places weren't giving that to me. And I do feel that when I go back, um, people treat me different. I don't think I've changed that much because I've always felt like I didn't particularly belong in these smaller, slower places. But people make people will be like, oh, Charlotte's back from the big city. And they'll say things like, I could never live there. Or, da, da, da. <laughs> you know what I mean? And these places are difficult places to live. They're expensive. 
they're competitive, they're loud, you're probably far from family, so you're dealing with loneliness and isolation possibly, they're difficult. Um, but I think life is about living, about choosing your own adventure. You know, I think that we have that choice and I think that it is honestly a sacred one. I think life is very precious and I think we have the choice about what do we want? Do we want to stay in this place or do we want something different? And I wanted something different. And I don't think there's anything wrong with choosing either. Both can be challenging for, for whatever reason. Um, but I chose this particular challenge um, and I'm, I think I'm better for it.